Hello again. This will be uh, the second of my videos uh, dealing with the overshot uh, gamp that I'm working on. And I just want to do a real quick introduction to it here now. And then I'm going to drop right into uh, some screen captures from the computer program that I used for planning this project. So I know this is going to be a little bit over a few people's heads, especially uh, people who are not real familiar with weaving. But I'm hoping that I can explain this in such a way that uh, some of you who aren't familiar with all the details may pick up and understand it and get, get a little bit better idea of what goes into planning a weaving project. So now I'm going to begin two chunks dealing with the computer program that I use for planning and then I'll get back to uh, a camera type video where I'll actually be showing uh, the, the weaving that came as a result of this planning that I'm going to show you on the computer. So here we go with the first of the computer screenshots showing the planning. Again we're back to looking at the pattern and you've seen this before. This is um, just showing in the area at the top here the threading or how I set up the warp threads. But I mentioned to you that there are some other parts to this screen. So I'm going to highlight them. This area, which is currently enclosed by the mouse, is called the tie-up area. This is where I plan which of the foot pedals will control which of the shafts. So let's take an example of something pretty simple and I mentioned that I would talk to you about tabby weave. So if I were to set up tabby weave now I would set my tie up whoops I would set my tie up this way this way this way and this way. Now what that would mean is that one of my foot pedals will lift shaft numbers one and three. The other foot pedal will lift shaft numbers two and four. And since over in my threading I always have an odd and then an even, an odd and then an even, this means that every second thread will lift something different. So now let's go to this third area of the screen. This is where I tell myself which pedal to push with my foot at what point in time. So I would set up what I'm going to push and I'd say if I want to push the first um, the, the pedal that controls one and three I would ha do this one. If I want the one that controls two and four I would do this. So what you can see is that the program and the same thing will happen with the actual weaving will show me a, a graphical representation over in this area of what threads will show in the final weaving product. So let's just plan on doing a straight tabby like this and let's see what it would look like. And there's the weave that would come out if I were using straight tabby for this entire project and if I were using white and red as my warp threads and dark blue as my weft threads. Well, we're looking at the pattern again and we're looking again at just the threading here at the top in the area that's covered by the black and white boxes at the top. But now let's talk about the tie-up for that part of this pattern which will be called overshot. This is where we'll really see our pattern. 
when one weaves overshot, you weave normally with two colors of thread, a background color and a pattern color. My intention is to do the tabby, which I've already showed you, with a white thread. So the white from the tabby and the white from uh, the warp, the white from the weft and the white from the warp will just give me white cloth as a background. But I'm going to tie up and use a blue for my pattern. So my my pattern tie up is going to be this. Three and four. One and four. One and two. Two and three. Now what that means is that whenever I put my foot down on shaft number one, that means I will raise, I put my foot down on pedal number one, I will raise shafts three and four. When I put my foot down on shaft number, or on pedal number two, I will raise shafts one and four. When I push down on pedal number three, I will raise shafts one and two. And when I press my foot down on shaft number four, I will raise shafts two and three. So now what we'll do is take a look at the treadling and talk about the and show what will happen when we press the um, the pedals and show what the pattern will actually look like. So we'll start here with number four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, 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 two, 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 three, 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 four, 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 one, two, three, four, 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 three, two, one, four, 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 three, 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 two, 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 one, 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 four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, two, three, four. Now, this is, there's not enough room on the screen to show all this, so I'm going to just make this a little bit smaller. And now you can see what my pattern will look like. I'm sure this may have been confusing for some of you, but this is how I plan a pattern. I've shown you uh, the pattern using the computer program uh, for planning the weaving. And now I'm at uh, the loom. I've started, just started, uh, the actual weaving of this. And I want to aim the camera down on the second and show it to you. Um, I need to make a comment first about what I'm what I'm seeing, and I've only woven about two or three inches of this. I'm a little disappointed because it's not as um, tight or as much of a square as I was hoping to. I'm ending up uh, with an with an uneven beat, and even though I'm, I beat fairly hard. Um, it's not coming together quite as tight, which basically means that the weft threads are spread out a little bit more than the warp threads. I was hoping for a more even distribution of threads. but uh, So that means that the pattern looks a little bit elongated. Anyways, it still looks nice. It's just not quite as even as I was hoping it would be. Let's take a look at what we've got here. And let's adjust the light. So, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit too. And what I want to show you in particular is just this little part here. This is the part that I was showing you the pattern for. And then the rest of this is where I was talking about the idea of the GAMP uh, being a distribution of multiple patterns in the same piece of cloth. But you can begin to see here the leaf effect that's going to have like four corners to it. So let's um, 
put the temple back on. Which just holds the edges out. We'll zoom out just a little bit so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. And the next is going to be three rows of set four. So let's start weaving. You can see that I'm using. Um, two weft threads of blue for every one weft thread of white. Um, the purpose of that is to make the blue really bold and bright uh, when in the end product. Now maybe that's part of the cause of um, why I'm getting the elongation. And I'll try another time with uh, not having it with two, but with just one. Now, just like with the uh, counting of threads, every time I do a few threads back and forth, I mark off where I am so I don't lose my position with this. Alrighty, here's um, the end result of that little bit of weaving. Uh, so you can see basically in this area here that I've got in effect the flower petal, flower petal pattern. As I said, my my only disappointment in this it, it, it looks nice, but it I was hoping that this would be a square and it has turned out to be a rectangle. I was hoping that effectively the distance would cut back this way so as that we'd have some the whole thing would be about like that. Instead, it's a little bit longer than I expected, but it still looks very nice. It's uh, kind of a neat looking pattern. And uh, that's what I've got there. Now, let's talk for a minute about the concept of overshot. Um, what you can see here, maybe if I use a pen to point that a little bit better, you can see it. Down here you can see I've got the white and the red that are basically a tabby. There's no blue overshot in it. The blue overshot is these longer floats or longer threads where we have the blue sitting on top of the white or the white and red background. That's why it's called overshot because this blue sits over the background thread of, of white. So what that means is that every second um, time that I go across the loom I'm using either a white or the blue threads as my weft. So let's aim the camera up just a little bit. And again I'll put the I'll do it this without the temple just for one or two to give you an idea. So first I'm going to do a tabby. That's every second thread raised up and every second thread down. And now I'm going to do a piece of the pattern weft. And for this I need to raise shaft number three. We'll go through and do that. Then I'm going to go back the other way with a tabby. Every thread up and down, every second thread up and down, or a tabby is the same as plain weave. And now I'm going to do pattern number four shaft. So you can see I lay in, the pattern lay is supposed to lay on top of the, uh, the white. And we'll do this one, more, one or two more times. We'll do the tabby. And then the pattern. And then the tabby or plain. And then the pattern. So hopefully you can see that what I'm accomplishing is 
laying down a base of my white or white and red when I'm indicating the, the splits between the pattern types and the blue which is the true pattern that I'm creating here. So that's the goal in overshot. Um, come on up here and look at me. Uh, hopefully when it's all done I get to show you the entire piece um, and not just the little bits that I'm showing you now but I'm hoping you'll get the idea that the, the, the concept of the overshot is a plain pattern or a plain base with an overlaid or overshot pattern on top of it. Okay, okay. what I want to do now is explain if I can with only what I've done so far the concept of a gamp. So what you can see here bordered by red is a pattern and it's kind of a leaf type pattern and that's the one that I showed you on the computer. With a gamp what you do is you plan only a part of your weave at any one time. So with that gamp I planned this leafy area. The areas that I did not plan are this which is this area here or this or this or even this. Okay, These just come out to whatever it is because for this section of the weave I was only planning this piece. So the next section I was not planning this. I was planning this. So I'm basically doing a diagonal chunk of patterns. So I planned this. Everything else on the piece falls into whatever it'll be. Then diagonally I planned this which is kind of a, a circle with square in the middle. The next thing I'll do will be up here but I haven't gotten that far in the weaving and I can't show it to you because I only have so much I can show while it's still on the loom. But the idea of a gamp is to put together parts of patterns and then just see what else turns out. So this gives you an idea of what I'm weaving as I'm working on this. And when I get it all done I'll show you the entire gamp and I'll point out what the um, the planned parts were and the unplanned parts. Continuing on with the uh, the gamp idea. So I, this is the third set of the pattern that's planned and it's basically this square here with that crossant. Then from there moving up, well, let's move over and then up diagonally and out just a little bit. Then this area here is the next planned pattern. So We'll go back down to this one. Let's take a look at what happened beside that. This was unplanned, but it sure looks neat. So then we got that one. That's over at the edge. Those are pretty interesting looking. Back to there's the plan. That's not the plan, but again, it's interesting looking. And that's not the plan, but again, it's interesting. It's not going up to here's the plan. There's not the plan. Back to the plan, not plan, not plan, not plan. But they just happen because you've got the threading set up. Each of the areas between the red stripes are set up for a different overshot pattern. And when I weave that one overshot pattern, the other things just happen. And it's, I mean, it's, it's predictable, I suppose, if you bothered to, to plot it out. But the serendipity of it is just too good to pass up. This is the last of the little chunks that I'm going to show you of the planned pattern. And we're looking at it right now. It's the largest of the individual patterns. It's right in the center of this project. And there it is, the um, kind of a rose petal or flower petal type arrangement 
Then if we look off to the side of it, well, let's go this way, you see the other patterns that just kind of arrange themselves because they happen to be next to this one and because of the way that they were individually set up in terms of the warping uh, threads that were planned for each of those. So there's where the project is as of this point. I think uh, the video has probably gotten about long enough now that I'll stop this video and uh, and post it to YouTube. Then um, I'll do the, I'll do one more video in this whole uh, overshot project. And in that one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath the loom, uh, which down there to the pedals, and I'm going to change the tie up. Uh, let's take a look at tie up. That's how I basically tie those strings to the pedals. And my intention is to change those so that, for example, this middle section here that I just did, this one, instead of having a line through the middle like that and have it be a flower petal, it effectively becomes a uh, circle somewhat like one of these, although not exactly like it. Or maybe more like that over there. That's the plan at least. I'm going to close the camera for now and we'll do that. The next video will not be until I finish the project and take it off of the loom and can show you uh, both what that the partial of uh, the next part of this might change the type and then the finished uh, products.